Good morning and welcome to St. John Hughes. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song, This Day Was Made by the Lord, number 419, number 419. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. I thank you, your love is eternal. You have given me life, you have given me life. I will proclaim the wonders you do. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather on this Thursday in the octave of Easter, so we're still continuing to celebrate Easter Sunday. We celebrate it for eight days. It comes to fulfillment in the second Sunday of Easter, or Divine Mercy Sunday. And today we are thanking God for his continual presence with us, his blessings. Uh, and we're mindful, however, that we are sinners, that we are in need of God's mercy. And so we humbly turn to him as we say, Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life for the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. Jesus Christ, 
Let us pray. O God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled men who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people heard in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You, children of Israel, Why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us, as if we had made him walk by our own power of piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong. And the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health. In the presence of all of you, now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days, you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors. When he said to Abraham, In your offspring, all the families of earth shall be blessed. For you first, 
God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Our psalm response is, O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O listen, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the past of the seas. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy, and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name 
to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Recently, I received an instant pot. I don't know if we have anybody who likes to cook, but an instant pot is kind of like a slow cooker, but it's also a pressure cooker. And so it's, a, it's actually a really great um, uh, tool in the kitchen, instrument in the kitchen. And so I've, I've been using it. It's wonderful. You can cook oatmeal and rice and all kinds of great soups and all kinds of things. I was reflecting on the instant pot because of all the pressure that it does, that it brings. And it, and it starts to bring all of that pressure and it can cook something and in an incredibly fast time period because of all the pressure and the heat and everything else. So with the pressure, I'm thinking of how Jesus became sin for us. Jesus became sin. Jesus did not sin. Jesus was without sin. He's, he's God. He's the sinless one. But in his humanity, in our humanity, we have a flawed and sinful humanity. So even though Jesus did not sin, all of the pressure that was because of our fallen nature and in our fallen world, our, that pressure was coming down upon Jesus and coming down upon Jesus, trying to pressure him into sinning. But he never did. But that pressure crushed him on the cross. It crushed him. It just crushed his life. He became sin for us. He broke the sin. He broke that. He took it with him. He took it into him. He took it into the grave. The pressure, the pressure, it was too intense. His human body could not take it anymore. And so he was crushed. But what happened through him being crushed? The Father raised him up again, gave him new life, a glorified life in his body, in his humanity, in our body, in our humanity, the Father raised Jesus to a new life. So he was raised, he was crushed, and he was raised. We've been reflecting in these past days that Jesus is blessed, broken, and given. That's Good Friday. He was blessed, broken, and given. He became sin for us. And he's raised. And in his being raised, we, in our humanity, are filled with the Holy Spirit. We're filled with the life of the resurrection. And we share in that life. We share in the love of God. And that love of Christ compels us. It impels us to go. So we go out as Jesus is impelling the disciples now. He says, you are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of this resurrection. The key for us is that we cannot avoid, we cannot avoid Good Friday. If we're going to be with Christ in his resurrection, in Easter Sunday, we have to be united with him in Good Friday, in his death. You can't escape from the suffering. The world wants to give us all kinds of ways. There's all kinds of distractions. We can be distracted with entertainment. We can go to a million concerts. We can watch a ton of movies. We can go on all kinds of adventures. We can get caught up in addictions. We can drink alcohol or do drugs or have lots of sex or we can eat lots of food or we can fill all our times. We can get caught up with work. All that stuff wants to take us away from our suffering, from the reality of our brokenness. That temptation is there constantly. Just come down off of the cross. Just avoid it. Jesus is going to do it. And then he can catch up with him later. It doesn't work that way. Unless you die with him, you will not have life with him. If we continue to, to die with Christ, we will rise with Christ. And so we too must be united with Jesus. He's led the way. He's there for us 
He's holding that space open for us. Blessed, broken, given. We unite with him in the pressure cooker. What else happens under pressure? That coal, all that ugliness, right? Something that's so ugly, so dirty, right? Under the pressure, that pressure crushes and it crushes the coal and it becomes a diamond. There's a new life. There's something pure, something radiant, something glorious that comes from this with God. Jesus is standing in front of his disciples and he's saying, I had to suffer. It's written all through scriptures. This is part of the Father's will that I would be crushed so that you could be raised. And he shows them his wounds It is me in the flesh. The wounds don't disappear. God doesn't erase all of that and say, oh, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. I'm going to get rid of all the suffering. Let's clean this up. No. Jesus maintains the woundedness. And he says, come, touch. Thomas, put your your fingers in my hand. Put your hand in my side. And Jesus wants us to do the same, to show him our woundedness, to not be afraid, to not run away, to not be distracted or numbed or to hide. No, present our woundedness, present our sufferings to Christ and allow him to place his hands to touch us in our woundedness so that we could be transformed and healed in his love. Trusting in God's love for each of us, we offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father that the church may continue to proclaim a suffering Messiah and the need to unite with him in his trials in order to emerge with him in his glory, we pray. For our political leaders, that they may be willing to be guided by the holy and righteous ones who point out the ways that lead to justice and peace, we pray. That Jesus, who is still our living companion, hidden in the Holy Eucharist, may give us the grace to truly build our lives around his life-giving presence, we pray. For all who have asked our prayers and all who stand in need of prayer today, that the Lord may grant them a time of refreshment and grace, we pray. For our faithful departed who participated with us in the breaking of the bread, that they may now be feasting with the Lord, recognized and adored in his holy kingdom, we pray. Pray for the intentions of this Mass. We pray for the intention of Nati Boat and the repose of the soul of Mel Gervasio. We pray for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our own hearts. And for the grace to remain united with Christ in his suffering and our suffering, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in your mercy, you raised us to new life in Christ. We ask that you could hear and answer these prayers through the same Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Two We're Bound for Emmaus, number 417, number 417. Two were bound for Emmaus, distant hearted and lost, all their hope for the future had been nailed to a cross, love unknown, then walked beside them. Come back. 
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with dear blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John Eudes and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who is broken and takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 791, number 791.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask our Blessed Mother Mary to help us continue abiding in uh, Christ through his suffering and into his resurrection and receive the graces as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And as we go forth, please join us in singing, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, number 556, five, five, number 556. Five,